Hello and welcome. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the most favorite topic of reenactors, drawers. Uh, for drawers for the Federal Cavalry reenactor. Simple drawers made from cotton flannel are one of the most important parts of a living historian's impression from the comfort and, and health standpoint. Uh, enlisted men were allotted three pairs of drawers in the first year of service and two pairs in each subsequent year. Cotton drawers act as the first layer against the skin, wicking away moisture and keeping the wearer cool and dry. So welcome and let's talk about drawers. A quality reproduction U.S. issued drawer should be made uh, from documented, uh, I guess an original pair. I've seen many makeshift drawers that do not meet any level of authenticity, uh, principally due to not being aware that originals actually are available. Uh, for instance, Wambon White based their drawers in a collection uh, from, uh, I believe, contractor Alan Rose. They feature a two-button waistband closure, adjustment laces at the back of the waistband, and ties at the cuffs. Uh, they are made of cotton flannel, a medium weight fabric that is durable on the outside and soft on the inside, which obviously is pretty important. Uh, too often living historians let this one simple aspect of their impression slide. To the veteran campaigner, a good pair of sturdy, good, authentic drawers is one of the most valuable items in their impression. Uh, their necessi I guess their necessity and then to have them on a hot day when sweat pours uh, down you allow you to keep cool. Um, likewise, on a cold night, a warm pair of cotton flannel drawers can be the difference between shivering on guard duty or standing warm, comfortable, and alert. Drawers are everything. Many newly enlisted soldiers, uh, when they first enlisted, uh, received with his first suit of government issue clothing a strange looking pair of white flannel pantaloons. Uh, veterans sometimes convinced the fresh fish that these were to be worn explicitly for parade, uh, but sooner or later the new recruit found himself properly wearing his first pair of under drawers. Uh, and those old army drawers were hardly the souvenir of any one's wartime service to be preserved for future generations. Thus, having any number of of original examples today is an extreme rarity and a high value, uh, but one that we must try to emulate in our impressions. Many current cavalry reenactors don't see the benefit of wearing appropriate drawers as many experiences with them are less than superior. If ill-fitting or worn properly, they tend to fall down the legs and rip to shreds when mounting or vaulting on top of your horse. If your drawers sit too low, they will rip, I mean, you'll definitely rip right out of them. If they are too high, they will definitely put too much pressure on your genitals. Uh, most working men in the first half of the 1800s preferred long shirt tails to under drawers. The army concerned, as always, uh, over the health and care of the soldiers began issuing drawers during the American Civil War. Uh, and it's starting out with the 1820s. There are many different patterns that came and evolved for the first half of the 1800s. The only known specimen of pre-Civil War Army drawers is preserved uh, with other issued clothing and equipment exchanged with the Danish government in 1858. This pair is made of off-white cotton flannel. The drawers are ankle length with a waistband made of double flannel and closed with two metal buttons in front and two pairs of eyelets behind. The flat uh, fell leg seam is on the outside. The fly area is reinforced with an external facing, uh, external facing wider at the bottom uh, than at the top and is slit on the outside of each ankle uh, and tied with cotton tape. The few pairs of Civil War issued drawers that exist today are very similar to the ones I just mentioned. The federal government purchased ready-made nearly 11 million pairs of drawers during the American Civil War. Hundreds of thousands were, were manufactured at clothing depots. Uh, Cincinnati alone produced 726,800 during the last year of the war alone. Most drawers procured were flannel and presumably uh, of government pattern. However, the sizable portion uh, purchased were of other styles such as knit drawers. Uh, in, in August uh, and September of 1862, more than a dozen contractors were awarded uh, various styles of drawer, get, awarded contracts uh, for their own style of drawers. The 1865 Quartermaster's Manual describes the flannel issue pattern in the following manner. Drawers, two and at one eighth yard of three fourths cotton flannel weighing 5.5 ounces to the yard, uh, two white metal suspender buttons, 
Two and a half skins of number number 35 WB linen thread, one yard of half inch white tape, uh, the four and a half inch slit at the bottom of each leg to have their edges hemmed. Each end of their slit for each leg is to have one quarter of a yard, one half inch of white tape strongly sewn on. The sizes were classified as number one, number two, number three. The number one sizes had a 30 and a half inch inseam and a 32 inch waist. Number two drawers had a 31 inch inseam and a 34 inch waist. And while number three drawers had a 32 inch inseam and a 32 inch waist, uh, there's nothing beyond that. Uh, there's no number four or five. So give you an idea that the largest drawers uh, that you could get issued had a 32 inch inseam and a 36 inch waist. The original pair in a private collection is marked with both a uh, clear contractor and inspector stamp, uh, made of off-white cotton flannel, rough on one, uh, rough on the outside with a soft nap on the inside. Uh, they should be ankle length with a two-button closure at the front of the waistband and tape ties securing the ankle slits. All stitching is by hand. There should also be about a four inch pleat near each hip bone, which provides uh, some fit at the waist. Army drawers were disliked by both men uh, and the critical observer. In 1861, a letter from a well-meaning doctor discusses the problems and offers an interesting solution. Uh, personally, this letter is, is kind of entertaining. He says, quote, in the camps of this region, many soldiers suffer from ill-fitting drawers. If large enough at first, washing them once or twice shrinks them so much as to render them very uncomfortable about the anal and genital uh, parts. Even if large, uh, if large, they often cause great discomfort even in civil life. As now made, they create too much st uh, stuffing about the aforesaid regions, including sweating, heating, drafting, and other diseases. Please examine a new pattern sent with this one. They possess the following advantages over the present pattern. And he goes on to say, number one, they require less material and less labor in making. Number two, they are readily adjusted to men of different sizes, if too large by overlapping the upper parts or if too small by lengthening the cord between them, uh, they being cut so low on the upper and inner part of the legs. Uh, also, number three, the stuffing in the crotch about the anal and genital regions prevents heating, chafing, sweating, uh, and otherwise diseasing them. Also, this prevents the accumulation of liquid otherwise observed by the stuffing. They allow freedom in motion and walking, running, jumping, crouching, and swimming. The uh, present pattern that I enclosed, if wet uh, or once washed, often binds the upper parts of the limbs and sometimes press hard upon, upon the genitals. Number five, unusual exposure as in night service or riding horseback, two pairs may be very comfortably worn. The uh, present pattern in clothes cannot be on account of the increased amount of stuffing. Number six, these may lessen the time and, and convenience of defecation because they obviate the necessity of unbuttoning the discharge of that function. Uh, again, personally, uh, I would love to see the, uh, the drawers he had included with this letter, uh, but uh, obviously he, he, he realized, this doctor realized there was an issue with these military issue drawers. Uh, many soldiers relied on home or other resources for their undergarments. For example, a typical pair was made by a Minnesota volunteer uh, while in Libby Prison. His drawers were donated to the uh, Minnesota Historical Society in 1907 uh, of off-white cotton muslin. They com they're completely hand-sewn and the drawers are seamed at the inside of the narrow uh, one-piece legs which are gathered into narrow waistband in the rear. The fly of these drawers made at Libby Prison uh, the fly is, is a button only on the waistband, which along with five other uh, bone and tin buttons fastened to the top. Uh, there is no method for size adjustment on this one at the cuff or the waistband. Uh, according to the maker's family, he had, the, uh, he had waited up all night for a comrade to die so that he could use the, uh, the winding sheet uh, for his garments. Uh, so many drawers were purchased and delivered into the stockpiles of the government that, uh, and that Civil War drawers were still being issued uh, to soldiers through the 1870s uh, with many negative comments and complaints that followed. 
Now that we have a brief history on the original drawers and how the veterans viewed them, we must move on to how we as reenactors use them or abuse them. For instance, uh, is making your drawers visible around your ankles or even rolling your cuffs uh, that happen to show off your drawers underneath, is, is it a reenactorism or not? Is showing off your drawers a reenactorism, yes or no? Uh, is tucking your shirt into your drawers like, like I have here a reenactorism or not? Uh, as always, in order to answer these questions uh, with this hobby, the first stop must be period writings or period photographs. However, like today, we don't have all, well, maybe not like today. Today's a little bit different, uh, but maybe a few years ago. But like today, we don't have a whole lot of people posing in their underwear uh, and pictures showing off their under drawers. Uh, therefore, we enter this dangerous realm of, well, did it make sense then? If you wouldn't show off your underwear today, they probably didn't show off theirs either then. Another possible excuse to the cuff rolling method, which exposes the under drawers, uh, revolves around the idea that exposing the drawers is simply an, under, uh, an undesired effect of allowing for better airflow and uh, better cooling for the soldier or reenactor when it's hot. Some uh, that we've seen do this happen to be modern veterans that brought about this practice into reenacting. Uh, using the mantra of, if it makes sense today, it makes sense then. Uh, again, this issue is, is hard to back up with documented proof. One possible comparison might be that if exposed drawer phenomenon is equivalent to stuffing trousers into socks, uh, except at least with that practice, there are several period engravings, drawings, or lithographs that show that one being done. This issue with drawers and, and exposing your drawers is a little bit more difficult. Additionally, blousing drawers into socks and shirt tails into drawers is a first line of defense against unwell welcome or an uninvited critters. It may not be cool uh, or cool for that matter, uh, but it is a more effective prevention against uh, doing nothing per se. Uh, some of the photos from Gettysburg Dead show vis uh, visible drawers with these shirts tucked in. Whatever your preference, anything beats uh, basically seeing an elastic waistband that says, you know, Hanes or something like that, uh, or fruit of the loom peeking through the vent or over the top of the trousers. So here's what I know. Number one, there were drawers. Number two, many men before the war had never worn or never even heard of drawers preferring longer shirts or uh, shirt tails. Uh, there, there were linen trousers which may have affected their use of drawers and there were knitted drawers as well. There were far more studio photos taken of Civil War uh, soldiers than photos of them in the field, which again makes it difficult to be definitive on this subject. Therefore, whatever you choose to do, just make sure that you have sound reasoning and logic behind your decision. Don't be a willy-nilly reenactor who does not know why he or she does what he or she does. Uh, and for the goodness sake, do not just do it because it looks cool. We don't want to see your underwear. So now the last thing we're gonna kind of talk about in these gear specific or equipment specific episodes is okay, great, we, we know all this. Now where do I get it? Where do I buy it? Where can I get it? Uh, and kind of talk about the differences between what you can get nowadays with these drawers. Uh, what, what I'm gonna show you here, what I'm wearing right now, is a pair of, of Wambon white drawers. These are the federal issue, the, the military style drawers. I also have a civilian pattern uh, drawers from them. Whether you buy the kit and sew it yourself or you have it you sewed from them, uh, my, from my experience and my limited experience, uh, the Wambon White Federal Issue drawers are by far my favorite and best fitting drawers, best feeling drawers as well. As you'll see, just like I uh, open up this video series, they are made in the pattern that the government required. They have two steel buttons or two metal buttons on top, a nice wide waistband, and uh, one of the things that you'll notice with this video, why I have my shirt tucked in and uh, why I'm generally shooting from the waist up, is that there's a gigantic gap um, from basically this, this last button on top, these two buttons right here, uh, all the way down uh, to the bottom of your, of your trousers. Uh, so it obviously it allows for very ease of access, uh, but I'm sure something that you as viewers don't wanna see, so I'm not gonna show that. Uh, but other than that, very comfortable, very durable, and you're not, when you step up on a horse, uh, you're not going to uh, you know, rip out your drawers. Your drawers need to fit uh, very, very snug. Well, not very, very snug. They need to fit enough to where they're, you're, you're not just sagging. If you sag, you will guaranteed rip out of them. 
So when it comes to selecting drawers, Wambaugh White, obviously I, I, would, I would suggest them. But uh, you know, I, like I said, I start off reenacting with a, a pair of Fall Creek drawers. They are very, very, uh, you know, basically you get what you pay for. Uh, Wambaugh White, I had them uh, completely made for me because I unfortunately don't have a whole lot of time on my hands. Uh, I just had them sew it and everything and they, I forgot they cost about a hundred or so dollars. Whereas uh, Fall, Fall Creek, you know, I think what, 36, 30, 40 bucks right around there. I mean, more than half the price, but you also get what you pay for. They're easy to rip out. They're very flimsy uh, garments. Uh, and honestly, when you do sweat, uh, they, there's much more of a sticking sensation uh, than the Wambaugh and White ones. Uh, that's why I like the, these are made, the Wambaugh and White ones are made of uh, the right pattern, the right weight of, of cotton flannel or uh, of flannel, and uh, the right uh, dimensions. Um, whereas the, the Fall Creek, not so much. Again, I'm not picking on one or another, even though some of you may say it is. Uh, but like anything else, it's, it's what you pay for. You pay for a $30, $30 pair of uh, light drawers, that's what you pay for. If you pay a hundred dollar pair of, uh, of you know correctly made drawers, that's what you pay for. Uh, and in, in, in the case of drawers, you definitely get what you pay for in quality. So, I uh, hope you enjoyed this episode on drawers. Uh, a little bit different. Hopefully I didn't scare anyone. Uh, but I think it's a, a conversation that we should start off with. We're starting to talk about our gear, equipment, uniforms, uh, and the foundation of all of that is what we wear as far as our drawers. Obviously the next one's going to be shirts, our undershirts, civilian shirts, the federal issue wool shirts, uh, all that good stuff. Uh, but definitely, uh, you know, try to increase your authenticity by you know getting a good quality pair of drawers, wearing them, and please, uh, try to uh, avoid wearing anything modern when it comes to your underwear. Uh, you know, it's it, no one can see it. No one's going to go check it. Uh, but just for your own sake, experience what those soldiers did 150 years ago and get a good pair of, of drawers, of flannel drawers, or even a civilian pair of drawers. Or if anyone has any knit drawers out there, I would love to see them and I'd love to hear what you think about them. Uh, number one, I would hate uh, to hear how much they cost. Uh, but either way, guys, I appreciate you watching this episode. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or wild accusations, I'd love to hear them. Please type those questions below. I'll try to answer all your questions. Uh, other than that, thank you again for watching 11th OVC, and have a great week.